Welcome back, everyone, to the XL Energy Center here in St. Paul, Minnesota, where after one period of play, the host, the Minnesota Wild, lead the visitors, the Vancouver Canucks, by a score of 2-0 on a first period of goals by Thomas Vanek, his 11th of the season, by Jason Zucker, his 7th of the season. So with a 2-0 lead, we bring in John Garrett, the television analyst for the yes. Vancouver Canucks. And, uh, John, always good to see you. I'm sure it's you're always, happy. It's always nice to see I'm you. I'm happy after the first period. You're probably not quite <laughs> as happy as that. Well, Thomas Vanek, and here's one of those ridiculous stats. We're getting like baseball. Since 2006, 2007, the only person with more power play goals than Thomas Vanek is Alex Ovechkin, which I know all those other great scorers. And Thomas Vanek, he just knows where to go, and he, he's so opportunistic, and he's got such great hands and a uh, power play guy where no matter yeah. where he's been. It, it almost looks like on the goal he got, there wasn't a lot of effort there. He just he just knows how to turn the stick and oh, that's knows it. exactly what he has hey, to do. And the goalie slide, the goalie's going to try and uh, get the pad over there, and Ryan Miller had the pad, and uh, just the right angle to get it up and over the pad. All right, we're going back to the pass. Because yes, we can. Yes. You and I, yes, <laughs> we can. You and I, Tom, <laughs> we, can we can go back. We'll go back to the days of Glenn Salmar. You played yes. for Glenn, obviously, in the, uh, the WHA days for the Minnesota yes. Fighting Saints. You were with him in Birmingham. And, yes. Uh, of course, Glenn passed away yesterday. It was a hockey icon, certainly in this oh, area. It passed away at yes. the age of 86 years old, I believe, in Paris, Ontario. But uh, uh, fond memories. Fond oh, memories of Glenn. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, he, that's all I've got, our fond memories of Glenn. And uh, he was our general manager when I was with the Fighting Saints. Uh, Harry Neal was the coach. And uh, he, he loved the game so much. Uh, training camps were just... Uh, uh, Amazing. He he brought in Jolt and John Bailey for training camp one year. He had a guy from prison wrote him. Uh, a guy who was in prison in New Brunswick. Uh, I forget the guy's name, but uh, he had two fingers that didn't work. And uh, Glenn said, "Oh, you On the can't." Same hand. It, it, oh. Glenn says, "Well, <laughs> Glenn says you can't come to training camp where you got to, you know your fingers." And, and so the guy took the ha a hammer and bashed his fingers so that they had to cut his fingers off so he could come to training camp with the fighting set. <laughs> we had the sixty guys that Glenn had, and, and uh, you know Jack and Jeff and Steve Carlson, and uh, it, it was just uh, amazing the team we had. And he, uh, Kurt Brackenberry and uh, Billy Butters and uh, oh, uh, yeah. oh, <laughs> Billy Goldthorpe and Gordy Gold. On and it, uh, we lived slap shot, and Glenn was the mastermind behind it. And uh, then, the, unfortunately, the team uh, ran into financial difficulties. It was the head to head battle here, and uh, the NHL, the tradition was the NHL was better. And at the time, the North Stars were really struggling. And we went. I know, I was on that side of it. <laughs> we went six weeks uh, without being paid, like three paychecks without being paid, uh, before we finally called it quits. And during that six weeks, when we weren't getting paid, we had the best record in hockey in both leagues and we weren't getting paid well anyway it came down to uh, a road trip we had played a game in right. st. Paul and the next day we were leaving on a road trip and the players we had finally said okay you know we're not going unless at least we get some meal money we, we, Wayne Belisle was, Wayne the, Belial was yep. the uh, owner of the team at the time and uh, so the, oh, show up at the airport show up at the airport we'll have meal money for you so Wayne went around to all his bar buddies and collected whatever donation they would give to keep the team alive and came to the airport with a brown paper bag with all this money in it. And uh, Ted Hansen was on that team too. And okay, so they come to the airport with a brown paper bag and they give it to Glenn and Harry to get on the plane and, and the rest of us get on. We, and we haven't been paid in six weeks, so we all got jeans on and everything. We hardly look like a professional team. But anyway, uh, we get on the plane, and Harry and Glenn are sitting side by side, and they got their tray tables down, and they're counting out the beer drenched one dollar bills to put in packets for our meal money 20, 20 uh, different yeah, snacks. 20 different snacks so we get paid while well, the flight attendants are walking by and they think these two elderly gentlemen have knocked over a convenience store so they uh, they radio ahead and then uh, getting off the plane there's harry and glenn getting arrested because they had thought they they had knocked over a convenience store it was just uh, oh it was and then and then i played for glenn in birmingham and and glenn did you, did you ever <laughs> let me just jump in did you ever notice that glenn liked more of the physical type player was oh god it, it was scary it was scary because uh, when i first went to birmingham it was a when we folded originally with the Fighting Saints, I went to Toronto and played with the Toros, and they had uh, Frank Mahovlich, Paul Henderson, uh, uh, Vaslav Nedimansky, and then they picked up Timmy Sheehy, and they, I mean, it was artsy, craftsy hockey at its best. Yeah. And it was uh, John Bassett wanted those Toronto Maple Leaf 
has-beens to, to come and play. Well, we go to Birmingham, and, and that wasn't selling. And the people in Alabama wanted Rock'em Sock'em, rock, rock Sock'em Hockey. So Glenn comes in, and we got all of a sudden we're trading Tim Sheehy for Dave Hansen, and we've got Frank never beaten, and we've got Jill's Bad News Billado, and uh, Serge Bodwin, and uh, Phil Roberto, and Steve Durbano, and, and it was, and we changed from uh, just uh, it was such a finesse team to a real tough team. And Glenn, Glenn just loved it. We are playing uh, Winnipeg in the playoffs the one year. They won the Avco Cup. They lost one game. And they lost it to us. And we're, we go to Winnipeg to play the first game of the series. And Glenn says, I don't care about these guys. I don't care about Hull, Hedberg, and Nilsson. We're going to just intimidate these guys. We're going to beat the crap out of them. And at the end of the first period, we're ahead 2-1. And I'm playing goal, and I'm thinking, oh, this is just great. We could upset these guys. And then Glenn comes in, and he goes, what are you guys doing? What are you doing? We're supposed to intimidate these guys. And so we go out in the second period, and we just go crazy. They have a five-on-three for seven straight minutes, no matter how many they scored. <laughs> They ended up, they beat us 8-2. It was just, but then we went down to, we went back to Birmingham and we beat them. And I, I remember uh, uh, Kent Nilsson was one of their star players. They didn't even bring him down to Birmingham because they knew that we were going to just run all over them in Birmingham. We won one game and then they went on one. But it, it was just, it, it was, and Glenn cared about the players so much too. As a general manager and as a coach, he just, that was one of the things, you know, and you, there's so many coaches now that guy gets traded. Who cares? You know, but Glenn really cared about the players. He really cared about their personal, how they were doing and uh, how they were feeling on the game nights. And uh, it was always uh, uh, if he was as a goalie, if you, oh, you're not playing, he, he would explain his reasoning why. And it was uh, we're playing Thanksgiving night in Birmingham. Jock Demers is the coach of the Cincinnati Stingers. And he had a tough team, Willie Trognes and a bunch of guys that uh, in Cincinnati, and they were supposedly intimidating. Rick Dudley was there. And Glenn, uh, I was playing all the games, and Glenn said, well, you're not, Cheech, you're not playing tonight. Uh, we're going to go with Wayne Wood. And Wayne Woody was 6'2", 220. And, uh, so, and then he dresses uh, Durbano and Beaton and Hanson as, start, as a starting five. And Thanksgiving Day in Alabama, it's the Bible Belt, and they have the pastor out and, oh, praise the Lord and thank the Lord for uh, these great athletes and <laughs> team spirit. What a great game hockey is and everything. And as soon as they dropped the puck, wham! <laughs> and we were five seconds in, and uh, they jumped Robbie Fatorik. And, and Rick Dudley skated off the ice, refused to play the rest of the game. And it was just, it, they called it the Thanksgiving Massacre. <laughs> it was, it yeah. was Glenn at his best. John, I get paid by the word, and I think I just lost my you, but anyway, thanks for being John Garrett. Uh, t terrific, terrific stories about Glenn Salmore. He will be missed. Let's go back to Kevin Falman. Good stuff. Thanks, John, for stopping by for doing so. We'll get you a gift certificate down to Tom Reed's Hockey City Pub. Wow, what cool old time stories. That was spectacular. After one period of play, the Wild all over at John's Vancouver Canucks. Two zip. We'll get you a recap after this. You're listening to Wild Hockey presented by XL Energy.